Hi everyone, I'm Anuka Theresen, fertility physician and doctor mom, and here to educate on fertility. In this video, we'll be talking about miscarriage. This can be a stressful time, and I get a lot of questions around this topic, such as when to try again, what are the odds of this happening again, are additional tests recommended, and how to better prepare for a future pregnancy. So let's go over some of these questions today. <music> A miscarriage is a pregnancy loss that occurs before 20 weeks of gestation. And what we're referring to is a clinical pregnancy. This is a pregnancy, for example, seen on ultrasound. What we're not referring to is something like a biochemical pregnancy. This is a pregnancy that's picked up on blood work or urine, but doesn't progress beyond that. So generally speaking, we're referring to clinical pregnancies when we're talking about miscarriage. The most common cause of miscarriage is a genetic abnormality of the baby, and this could originate from a genetic abnormality in the egg, in the sperm, or during embryo development. And things that increase the chance of miscarriage are going to be advancing female age. So as a woman is getting older, her chance of miscarriage is increasing. For example, under the age of 35, the chance of miscarriage is about 12 to 15 percent. After the age of 40, it has increased to over 50 percent. The other thing that increases chance of miscarriage is the woman's prior obstetrical history. If she's had multiple pregnancy losses, she's going to be at increased risk for another miscarriage compared to someone who has not had a miscarriage. So chance of miscarriage with the first pregnancy, generally speaking, is about 12 to 15 percent. With the second pregnancy, if the patient has already had a miscarriage, her chances of another miscarriage increase slightly to 14 to 21 percent. After two pregnancy losses, the chance of another loss is about 24 to 29 percent. And after three losses, it increases to about 31 to 33 percent. So these are the things that will increase our chances of miscarriage. When a woman has had two miscarriages, it's reasonable to see a physician to get further workup to determine if there are other causes that might be potentially contributing to the pregnancy losses. So that workup includes the following. The first is a genetic evaluation of both parents. So we do a blood test looking at their chromosome makeup called a karyotype. And sometimes we'll find subtle abnormalities, for example, inversions, translocations, things that don't necessarily present in the parent. But when their chromosomes divide into egg and sperm, sometimes there can be an unbalanced chromosome number in the gametes, and that can result in future pregnancy loss. The second part of the evaluation is checking the anatomy of the uterus. So we're looking for fibroids, septums, irregular shape of the uterus. These things can also contribute to miscarriage. How we evaluate the uterus is sometimes with a saline ultrasound called a hysterosonogram, an x-ray called an HSG, and sometimes with an MRI. The third part of the evaluation is looking for a few medical conditions, such as uncontrolled thyroid dysfunction, uncontrolled diabetes. These things can also contribute to pregnancy loss. The fourth thing is looking for blood clotting disorder called antiphospholipid syndrome. We do this with also a blood test looking for antibodies. Sometimes if the patient has a history of a blood clot, such as a DVT or a family history of that, then we'll do a more extensive thrombophilia workup looking for more blood clotting disorders. We don't do that in everybody, only if they have that personal or family history. The last thing is looking for some environmental factors. For example, excess smoking, alcohol, caffeine, drugs, obesity. Some of these things can also contribute to pregnancy loss. If all these things come back normal, we're left with a diagnosis of unexplained infertility, and this happens about 50% of the time. In these cases, we are still sometimes suspicious for a genetic abnormality. For example, if there's an advanced female age, there's an increased risk for diminished ovarian reserve, and this could be contributing to the history of pregnancy losses also. Treatment of miscarriage really depends what we find on the workup. For example, if we find a balanced translocation on the karyotype of one of the parents, we'll recommend IVF with genetic testing of the embryo. This will help to identify which embryo is genetically normal and help decrease their chance of miscarriage. If we find a uterine abnormality such as a septum, this can be treated surgically. Not all uterine abnormalities can be, but that one in particular can. So it'll depend, again, what we find on the workup. If there is a medical condition like uncontrolled diabetes, correcting this medical condition is what we'll recommend. If a blood clotting disorder is found, such as antiphospholipid syndrome, we'll recommend blood thinners. And if an environmental factor is found, then we'll counsel the patient to avoid that environmental factor. So the treatment really depends on what we find on the workup. 
A common question that we get is when is the best time to try again for a pregnancy after a miscarriage? This is really going to depend on the couple. If the couple has had only one pregnancy loss, then they could theoretically start once the beta hormone is down to zero, and if their cycles are regular, they can start the next cycle. If a couple has had multiple miscarriages, two or more miscarriages, then it's recommended to actually see a physician to get further work up to determine if other things might be contributing to miscarriage. The other things to keep in mind are female age and duration of trying. So if a woman is under the age of 35 and has been trying for a year, it's recommended to see a fertility specialist to get further workup. If the woman is over the age of 35 and has been trying for six months, it's also recommended to see a fertility specialist to get further workup. If the woman is over the age of 40, it's actually recommended to see a physician right away for further workup. So keeping these things in mind are also important when planning the next pregnancy after a miscarriage. Things to keep in mind when planning for pregnancy after a miscarriage. Number one, a prenatal vitamin, ideally starting one month before trying to conceive. The second thing is avoiding alcohol, smoking, drugs, and minimizing caffeine. And by minimizing caffeine, we usually mean less than 250 milligrams a day. The third thing is healthy lifestyle with diet and exercise. And then the last thing is keeping in mind the things that we talked about earlier in the video and knowing when to see a physician for help. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found the video helpful, please give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe down below. If you have comments or questions, please leave them for me there also. Thanks so much again for watching and see you in the next video.